Several years before we had our real horse trailer, there was a fun kit bashing project in 125th scale. We started with a Galaxy Limited fifth wheel tandem axle car hauler and ended up with a reasonable replica of a two horse gooseneck. One noticeable inaccuracy is the floor height, which is quite a bit higher than a real horse trailer would be, especially a step up style like this one. The kit's torsion axles are good replicas of the style used under most horse trailers. Because I narrowed the trailer slightly, I had to reduce the axle width. I did this by using the torsion ends set inside brass tube. The kit's wheels were replaced with a different style, but I did use the kit supplied inner wheel halves to represent brake backing plates. Electric brake wiring was installed, although my wiring routing is incorrect. It doesn't go up through the floor on a real horse trailer, it runs along the frame towards the front end. The wheels were taken from Monogram's F250 pickup truck kit, and they're a perfect fit inside the Galaxy supplied kit tires. Trailer's overall length was shortened by a few feet, and the majority of the curbside door disappeared in the process, although some filler work was still required, as can be seen by the styrene strip and putty. Most gooseneck trailers taper towards the front end, and this was done on the model by scoring grooves on the inside of the kit sides to make them easier to bend. Styrene sheets were laminated on the inside of the walls, both to reinforce the joints and to hide the rough texture from bending the front corners. Brass wire pins were provided to locate the roof cap so it could be made removable both for ease of painting and for the possibility of adding interior detail at some future date. Galaxy's kit is equipped with a fifth wheel hitch. Most horse trailers have gooseneck hitches and I created one of these using styrene and aluminum tube along with styrene sheet gussets and bolt head castings. A landing gear leg was made from styrene tube, strip, bolt head castings, and a landing gear pad from an AMT trailer kit. Landing gear was modeled in the raised position as the intention is to display the model hooked to a tow vehicle. The roof cap was the most challenging part of the project. It had to be cut down the middle, shortened, narrowed, tapered on the front end, and the rounded corners built up with laminated styrene sheets. Multiple rounds of sanding and filling were required before an acceptable result was achieved. The nose cap was wrapped with a piece of sheet aluminum, bent to fit, and it'll be polished to a mirror finish later. The same sheet aluminum, which is 016000 in thickness and supplied by KNS, was used to make templates to trace out the window openings. These were held in place with 0090 nuts and bolts. The window opening was traced, and then the sheet aluminum was removed so the window openings could be cut out. Using the template made it easy to ensure consistent size and radius on all the window openings. Window openings were rough cut out and then finished with a file. Another challenging part of the project was creating the multiple window frames. I used 164th brass strip, bending it into U-shapes to make half window frame sections as shown here. This fixture was made using steel pins set into drilled holes in a piece of plate, but it could be done equally well using brass tube soldered to brass or copper sheet. To get the brass strip to bend in this direction, known as the hard way in metalworking terms, requires annealing it by heating the brass strip red hot with a torch and letting it cool gradually. The brass is then softer and easier to work with and can be formed around the corner as shown here. The distance across the outside face of the pins matches the inside dimensions of the window frame and ensures consistently sized half window frame sections. The steel plate can be used with magnets to hold the pieces together for soldering. Window frame sections are trimmed, soldered and then filed to clean up the joint. Joining the brass strips end to end is known as a butt joint and although it doesn't have a lot of structural strength, it's adequate for cosmetic purposes on the model. 
The window frames are made so they slightly overlap the window openings, providing a ledge on the inside into which the window glazing can be fitted. I installed the window frames at this stage, although in hindsight it would have been better to leave them off, paint them separately, and install after the trailer was painted. A look at the other side, with one extra window frame for the tack room door, and a 125th scale horse, showing us why we have to install safety bars on the windows. These were made with styrene strip and rod, and installed in all the windows in the horse compartment. Micromark rivet decals, applied in groups of four, were used to add faster detail to the side sills of the trailer. Safety bars were installed in the trailer's rear windows as well, and the outline of the doors was built up using styrene strip. At this stage the trailer body was ready for painting, door hardware would be added later, painted silver, to simulate a natural metal finish. The hinges were constructed from styrene strip and rod, with styrene rivet head castings added to simulate the fasteners. Brass rod, strip and tube were used to create the door latches and lock rods, and these were also painted silver. Attaching these parts can be done with testers clear part cement, or micro scales crystal clear, to avoid damaging the painted finish. Window frames and safety bars were touched up with black paint, and the striping on the sides was taken from AMT logging trailer kits. There is more striping than is provided from the factory, and it represents what some owners do to make their trailers more visible. Safety chains were made using the chain provided in AMT's flatbed trailer kits, and the hooks are actually jewelry clasps found at the craft store and are called lobster claws. A piece of monofilament fishing line represents the breakaway cable, and the spare tire I had on there originally was replaced with a different one that has a molded on cover. Styrene strip was shaped to represent the rubber bumper underneath the door, painted black and glued in place, and the oval taillight lenses are 032 brass wire shaped around a form and painted black. The bumper sticker is self-explanatory, as anybody with horse experience can attest. Excess decals were printed and applied, because although the trailer is not a 100% accurate replica, it is based on some drawings they had of an excess trailer. And the tow vehicle is also a minor kit bash, using parts from two of the Revell F-150 kits to create an extended cab with a fleet side box, a combination that was not offered in kit form. Styrene tube and strip were used to create a receiver style hitch for the back of the truck, along with safety chain attachment points, and the electrical plug for the trailer. Gooseneck hitch was made with styrene sheet and bolt head castings, with a round headed push pin for the hitch itself. The eye bolts originally installed as shown here were too small, and will be replaced with larger ones later. The hay bale is an alfalfa cube sanded down, with thread for baler twine. Basic black finishes to me is gloss black applied with a spray can, and the chrome is done using Alclad. Larger eye bolts as installed here make it possible to actually use the lobster claws to hook the safety chains up. Just like on the real gooseneck rigs, clearances are tight, but it will turn the corner. Thanks for joining me for a quick look at this older model project. It was a lot of fun to build, and a little different take on the Galaxy Car Hauler trailer.